good practice to try to be without attributes, to feel that what one is, is attributeless. Therefore, it's not this or that. It's nothing perceptible. It's no sensation. It's no feeling. It's no idea. So try to stay devoid of attributes and be, be alert, be aware, be mindful, but without latching onto any attribute, any quality, any object, just staying empty, staying unidentified with anything that has the power to appear. And that is wisdom. That's discernment. And we can always practice that, that we are not what appears, that this is not the self. This is of the nature of the self, but it is not the self. It appears because of the power of illusion, but we are without attributes. And it's like you don't land anywhere. No idea affects you. You're not graspable by any concept or feeling. No sensation can grasp you. You just stay without attributes. That's the culmination of not this, not that, or nitty nitty. And if that knowledge is strong, the knowledge that you are not what appears, then it can be maintained and practiced even in appearance, in activity, in sensations. If that knowledge remains strong, the remembrance, the discernment, the wisdom remains firm, that I am attributeless, then whatever sensations or attributes or ideas or relationships arise, it doesn't grasp you. And it's revealed to be empty, to be imaginary, to not have real existence apart from the nature of the power of the self, which is illusion. So just to stay, just to remain without quality, makes the mind subtler and subtler, and more and more able to recognize its absolute, its freedom. Freedom is a good word for the true self. It's not this, it's not that, it's not the self, it's not awareness, it's not being, it's not that, that, that. Freedom cannot be defined. If it is defined, it's no longer free. It's a thing which is bound, has limitation compared. So you are freedom itself. Freedom is one of the best terms to point to what you are. Because if you are freedom, then that means you're not anything else. But try to find freedom. You can't locate it. You can't identify it through a quality. It is attributelessness, qualitylessness. And yet it mysteriously is. It is the absolute, yeah. I mean, it's just the word, but it points to the same as the word absolute, yeah. I'm just saying how it's good to practice being without attributes, or knowing yourself without any attributes, removing the attributes or the attachment to attributes, qualities. Because it's self-evident that you are. It doesn't have to be proven. It's evident. We wouldn't have this conversation if you were not. So, so that's already confirmed. It's obvious. But then to not mingle it with any attribute, to remain strong in your knowledge that you are free of all qualities and attributes, sensations and forms and colors and feelings and ideas and memories and projections, states of mind, states of body, and just to remain aware of the contrast between attributes and yourself, to cut through that illusion, even while it's appearing. Now it can be very effective sometimes to enter a meditative state where you remove all these attributes from view, where you kind of enter into a state of concentration or samadhi or expansiveness where it's more like space. So you more directly confirm to yourself that you still exist without body, without mind, without thoughts, without experience in that way. But it's equally, maybe even more powerful, for most people more practical, to practice it in contrast to attributes of the daily life, of the different bodies, the physical, mental, even the causal body. Even God, even the I am being, even the knowledge I am is still an attribute. So to remain strong conviction, and awareness, attentiveness, that you are nothing that is perceivable. Perceivable is made of the nature of you, but you are not that which you perceive. You're not limited to, you're not confined by. 
This is a very simple practice, but it requires a certain strength of determination and clarity, which is a practice, and you become subtler and subtler. The less you identify with attributes, you naturally become subtler. It's just another way of saying the mind becomes purer, or the essence of the mind becomes purer in its transparency to the truth that is beyond it all, even beyond itself. It's a combination of purifying the mind to the point where it recognizes that even its own purified self is transcendent. It's still an attribute. The pure essence of mind, or the citta, purified citta, or that pure I am without form or identification is still an attribute. It's the primordial attribute. It's that mula maya, mul prakriti, that original, essential nature of all appearances. But that too appears. That too is known. That too is a quality. It's just a very formless, pure quality that's hard to describe in conventional terms. So the self as the I am already transcends conventional reality. But then even that divine reality can also be known as an appearance, can also be recognized. And then one can stay truly without attributes, even without the attribute of God or isness or beingness. And yet you still exist, you still are, even without being. But that are, that I am, beyond the I am, cannot be described because it literally is prior to any concept, any attribute. So just remain firm in your conviction that you are attributeless. While the attributes all appear and engage with each other, it's only attributes that are engaging with attributes. The attributes have never engaged with you, with the true self. The mind connects with the body. The bodily sensations connect with the knowledge of the intellect or the mind. And they're all kind of based in this void of nothingness or the causal body which is all enabled by the light of awareness or being or knowledge. So without knowledge, you wouldn't know nothing. Without knowledge, you wouldn't know intellect. Without knowledge, you wouldn't know sensory input. Without knowledge, you wouldn't know body or world. So all the attributes relate to each other. They make love to each other all the time. It's just a mingling of ingredients, like a big stew or soup, different ingredients that are intermingled, but the soup never intermingles with you. So just maintain that clarity of conviction. Strengthen it. Strengthen the conviction that you are without attributes of any kind, even without qualities. I am is the first and final and only quality that permeates every other quality. Every attribute is intermingled. Just like every ingredient in the soup consists of the water element or the liquid element. That's the final attribute to disidentify from. But when you know the attribute or the pure quality of the water, you know the whole soup. It's the wholeness, it's the oneness, the everythingness. The I am Brahman, I am all that there is. I'm everythingness. But then you realize the soup is apart from you. It's still a thing, yeah. Albeit the subject, but the subject is still an object. The pure subject of which all objects are made is itself still an object to the absolute attributeless, inexplainable, mysterious existence beyond I am. So it's not that hard, it's not that difficult. We just need consistency in our practice, which is just this knowledge. So that's the path of understanding as opposed to the typical path of meditation. Doesn't mean meditation cannot be an expression or extension of this knowledge, but it's an extension of this knowledge rather than a means to it. If you understand it, it's not that hard. You can even logically get it. And then that logic will become transparent to that intuitive knowing of it. And then meditation is kind of a natural expression of knowledge being maintained in the moment. When you maintain awareness of the attributelessness of self, then that is meditation naturally. And it can be more or less pure, or more or less quiet, or more or less concentrated, but those are just different degrees of meditation that follow firm knowledge or understanding.